Hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my overview of Bellright. For those on across it, I do overviews and reviews pretty much daily on the channel. And when it comes to an overview, it's just a look at the first two hours of the game. That's the Steam refund window, and Steam thinks that you can make up your mind about whether you want to keep a game or play it in that time, and I kind of agree. I very much doubt that 20 hours in, you're going to change your mind about something two hours in. So the idea is a short, punchy video giving you the broad strokes, keep it under 10 minutes, put it on your radar, helps me triage what I will and won't review going forward. So Bellright, it's early access, it's definitely got some jank. It's made by Donkey Crew, who actually did Last Oasis, which was a cool little game I really liked thematically. The idea of building these gigantic sand ship structures that are essentially like uh, that wood punk mechanized walker sort of thing that you see in niche hobbies. And you'd build your big giant bloody wood walker and uh, basically run from the sun as it rotates around the planet and sets it on fire. So you had this sort of nomadic base building thing. The problem is the game had a really big Zerg problem because it was heavy on PvP. And if you're someone like me who doesn't really want to get inside of a 40 man uh, raid or anything like that, your, your fun was a little bit limited once people really figured out how the game worked and just how to bully out everybody. But still, thematically and mechanically, there was a lot of cool stuff that you see in this actually, like the directional combat has come across as well. So there were a lot of mechanics and themes that worked really well in Last Oasis. It just had that kind of really big issue. So what have they done with Bellright? Like, at least from a design perspective, they are bringing a lot of similar stuff, like you're doing colony building, albeit it's in a medieval setting. But what they've then done is they've traded out the PvP for PvE, which I think is a brilliant move. And this may well be the ticket for this game popping off, as opposed to Last Oasis. Last Oasis had a lot of enthusiasm behind it. People recognize the value of it, but again, when you're an indie and you go hardcore PvP, your game lives and dies on your population. And I think it attracted the sort of population that were more interested in PvE broadly, and that's why it dropped off. But this is all speculative, and I think Bellwright will stick it. So yeah, essentially, maybe a little bit like Medieval Dynasty. It's funny having Manor Lords out as well. This whole build up a settlement in a medieval setting theme, we're seeing a lot of it at the moment. However, it's done from that third person perspective, much closer to say Medieval Dynasty than Manor Lords, for example. And that's, that's more of an RTS colony builder. So the comparisons are always gonna be between this and Medieval Dynasty. I haven't played that in a long time and it's it's gone 1.0 and it's had a lot of updates and that is so like, it, it's not the best touchstone for me these days. But the things that do stick out in this game are marked improvements over what was going on in Dynasty. Examples being, you can get little villages and there is, in the two hours I've spent with, I've only really gotten one, but uh, you know, like I built him a hut and that houses two and you can clearly, in fact, there's a narrative through this game. It's about like reclaiming land and lost birthright and all this sort of stuff, a kind of revenge uprising, unite the tribes kind of thing. So, and there's like army tabs and that as well. So the ceiling on how many guys you can have in your settlement seems to actually be quite high. So definitely a slow burn, definitely a grind, nature of the beast, but nothing that wasn't still engaging, right? Those two hours flew by. And while, like I said, I only got one little sidekick villager, it was enough to give me that taste of where the game's going and realize it probably has dozens and dozens of hours of that grind, but it's all fairly tolerable. Anyway, what I was trying to get at is you can allocate your villagers to one of three positions. Uh, it's like companions, so they just follow you around like a sidekick. Guard, so they're sort of a patrolling protector of your tribe or your settlement or whatever you want to bloody call it. And worker. And the thing with worker is, you just plug them in and they will fill in odd jobs around the camp. So the AI has a, a certain sophistication that is sort of absent in this genre and is very welcome. I believe you can lock the AI to specific jobs. You can say, you work here. You work at the bloody lumber mill or whatever. But generally speaking, I just let my dude do whatever he wants and I queued up things like research table, things like uh, building, you know, a, a gathering spot or a log logging spot. And he's just tooling around doing his own thing. You know, it's all very slow-mo. He's not in exactly in a screaming hurry. But broadly speaking, the dude just runs my little town in slow-mo. And it's one of those things you're like, good, I want, I want half a dozen guys just walking around doing odd jobs. It's very, very cool. So it's not it's not as uh, granular or, or high fidelity, I suppose, as a requirement as, say, 
medieval dynasty, but this is a good thing. This isn't necessarily like a dumbing down or anything like that. I do recall in, in dynasty, you kind of had to hold hold the bloody hand of all your little sidekicks and, and, and they would just sort of stand still if, if there was a an error in the job queue. So this works really well. Um, it's also got the sort of uh, build system. I don't know what else you would call it, but the thing I think of most recently is like RimWorld because I play that a lot. But you can you can create float bills on pretty much anything. Uh, to explain what I'm trying to say is I could go to the lumber yard or the woodcutter or whatever it's called, and you could say, queue up wood, 10, always keep that up to date. Queue up logs, five, always keep it up to date. So you set these these bills that as those materials get used in recipes, uh, they will then go back and cut trees down to fill the float up in the bill system. And you can do that for everything pretty much. And so that's welcome because that's how I like to play these sort of games. So essentially you build your stations, you set the floats and you just let the dudes run it for you. As I said, there is a narrative and it is a very much like a, let's say like a combat oriented one. You are wanting to work your way through the lowlands and win people over hearts and minds, that sort of stuff. It is actually quite compelling. There is a charm to it. The first village that you start nearby don't want anything to do with you because, again, I won't get into the story too much, but they are worried being under the iron fist of the, the duke or whatever ruling the area. They're like, no, nah, we don't want to talk to strangers. So you earn their trust by doing bloody busy work quests, but it does, it ties together. So you can see it. You can see the moving parts. You can see the collect 10 boar pelts, but for whatever reason, the mouthfeel seems to be tolerable here. So now the village has opened up. They've been given the, the go ahead from the elderman saying, I can talk to them. And you're going around just doing busy work and getting people to trust you. And, and that seems to be how you recruit into your village. I don't think it's sort of like a procedural generic, you know, fallout shelter, random dudes just turn up at the front or or even like manor lords, right? Keep your desirability over a certain threshold and people will just rock up. I don't think that's what's going on here, but who knows, that might change. I'm pretty sure you have to just interact with people and earn their trust to bring them across, which is kind of interesting. And that's going to be a negative for some people because that, that takes a lot of the emphasis off of the settlement building and more onto interplay doing busy work quests for random NPCs. I don't know how I necessarily feel about it. And again, with something like Manor Lords coming out pretty much the same week, and I'm much more of a colony builder type person. I, I think I prefer the Manor Lords system. I'm not necessarily saying this is bad, but it's gonna come down to personal preference. I haven't even really touched on the combat, but it is sort of directional swings and it seems pretty solid. I've fought a couple of wolves and got my ass handed to me. And your little companion jumps in and helps out as well. But yeah, look, there seems to be a bit of promise and the parallels are a little bit eerie with Manor Lords in you know, the whole build the little settlement, escalate it, build a mini army and wage war against the ruling Dude, it's, it's thematically almost identical. Um, however, done, you know, this is a third person survival craft, and that is, a, you know, a top down colony settlement builder. So, something for everyone. Everyone eats well this week. Anyway, it seems really promising, but again, obviously, know what you're getting into. Early access, the early access component's not so bad. It's, it is janky because it's kind of double A indie, but despite all that, it seems to actually have a fair bit of content. But it is, it's definitely a grind. It's a certain type of grind that I can get around, but maybe not everyone else can. Anyway, team, might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.